Hello everyone, myself Paras Mokwana, Assistant Professor of EC Department at LJ Institute of Technology. Welcome to the session of Digital System Design. So in the last session we have started chapter number 3 that is sequential logic circuit design. We know the basic difference between a combination of circuit and a sequential circuit. One is having a memory element. Sequential logic circuit has a memory element and it output depends on the present state as well as the previous state of the input. And in the combination circuit it does not require any memory element. Its output depends only on the present state of the input. Alright? Apart from that, we have seen what do we mean by latch and the flip flop. Right? So, in today's session, we are going to study different types of flip flop, latch, and a difference between latch and the flip flop. Now, what is the difference? First, we are going to focus on what is the difference between the latch and the flip flop. Basically, both are same. Like they are the basic building block of sequential circuit. But the latches can be built from the gates and the flip flop can be built from the latches. Alright. Apart from that, a latch does not have any clock signal. But the flip flop always has a clock signal. See over here. You are able to see the diagram of latch in which uh, two inputs are there as dash r dash they are applied to the NAND gate two NAND gates are there two outputs q and q bar q bar is complement of q and these outputs are cross coupled to the another input of the NAND gate alright with the help of that NAND gate we are able to construct we are able to construct the flip flop by applying the clock signal Correct. Right. So flip flop will always have a clock signal. Now, what are the flip flops? So flip flop in electronic circuit, that a flip flop or latch is a circuit that has a two stable states. It can be used to store information. All right. So the flip flop is a bi-stable multivibrator. So the circuit can be made to change the state by applying the signal. Which signal is there? Clock is there. Okay. So it is a basic storage element in the sequential logic. Now what are the applications of flip flop? See, the flip flop and latch both are used to store the information. That will be a digital. Okay. We are making we are going to store the bits in the flip flop as well as the latch. But this kind of circuit that are mostly used in the computer to store the program information like a RAM memory and the resistors. Okay. So the flip flop can be used to store a single bit. That means a one flip flop requires to store a single bit only. Okay. If we need to store a multiple bits, more number of bits, we require a number of flip flop. Right. So the data may represent the state of sequence, the value of the counter, and the ASCII character. Right. So, what are different types of flip flop? There are total four types of flip flop: RS flip flop, JK flip flop, D flip flop, and D flip flop. See, the difference between RS flip flop and the clock flip flop is: in the clock flip flop, we are going to apply the clock signal. Okay. These are the different types of flip that we are going to study. Okay. First, we are going to focus on the RS flip flop. Okay. So what do you mean by RS flip flop? So the circuit containing the cross coupled connection which is used to remain in the memory state. That means it can be set, reset, set, reset. That's why 
it is called the reset set prefer r s r stands for reset s stands for set all right so reset set so the flip flop can be set or reset depending on what is the input all right so it is in the memory state by using the asynchronous sequential circuit right so it is called the diary couple or the rs now we are going to study its logical diagram and how this rs flip flop will work so basically it consists of two inputs and two outputs right two inputs are r and s and two outputs are q and q bar okay q bar is a complement of q right so the inputs are denoted by r and s and outputs are like q and q bar so this rs flip flop will going to be implemented either with the help of nand gate or with the help of nor gate so why we are going to use a nand and nor nand and nor both are universal gate so if we are going to implement with the nand gate see over here my circuit will be like this two inputs s dash r dash or i can say S and the R. Okay. Q and the Q bar is my corresponding outputs, and these outputs are cross-coupled to the each other. See, the output Q is connected to the second NAND gate of uh, the input, which is having the R dash, and the Q bar is connected to the first NAND gate. First input of the NAND gate. Right, so this are called the cross couple connection. All right. Now, by applying the input, what is the effect of effect on the Q and Q dash? Whatever will be the state of the Q will be the over here available at the complement side, the Q dash. All right. Consider that my S. And the R both are zero. See, right? So based on the state of my input and at which gate we are going to apply, we are going to apply the NAND gate. We know the condition. If any of the input in the NAND gate is equals to Zero, then output will be by default this one. All right? Why? Because NAND gate is the complement of AND gate, right? So in the AND gate we know that if any of the inputs is equals to zero, output is equals to zero. So the complement of that zero is one. That's why the any of the inputs is equals to zero, output is equals to one. So if both the inputs are zero zero, we can say that my both Q and Q dash both are one, but it is not allowed. Why? Because whatever may be the state of the Q will be available at the complement side of the Q dash. If the Q is equal to zero, Q dash must be a one. All right? That's why if both the outputs Q and Q dash are one, that means it is not allowed. All right? So that's why the first step not allowed. So consider second case. S is equals to one. R is equals to zero. Now what to do? Apply. S is equals to one and R is equals to zero. You will get Q dash is equals to one because any of the input is equals to zero. My output at that corresponding NAND gate is one. So Q dash is equals to one and the Q is equals to zero. All right. That's why. Over here, Q is equals to zero. Q is equals to one. Whenever the Q is equals to zero, my flip flop will become a reset, right? And whenever the Q is equals to one, flip flop is set. That's why the state is reset, right? Because Q is equals to zero. Q is equals to one. If S is equals to zero and R is equals to one. What will happen? Yes. 
apply s is close to 0. So, what will s dash is mentioned? That's why right. 1 is going to be applied. Alright? And r dash is there. So, whatever the state of the r, over here what is r? r is equals to 1. Apply 0. That means at s, 1 is going to be there and at r, 0 is going to be there. Alright? To the input of the 1 of the negative. So, s is equals to 1. What we are getting over here? Flip flop is going to be reset. Why? Because that output Q will become zero. Right? But whenever we are going to apply over here S is equals to zero. And what will happen? If S is equals to zero, Q will be one. And R is equals to zero, Q will be the one as well. If R is equals to zero, one that, that we have already considered. Alright? So, right now, if we are going to consider the third case, my click from Q is equals to 1 and Q dash is equals to 0. Alright? Because we are going to apply it over here S and R, 0 and 1. So, click from is going to be set. 